Hi everyone. In today's video, we will be playing around with the Sony FX6. Now, as some of you may know, if you are fans of this channel, about three weeks ago, my Sony a7S III was stolen. I now have some insurance money and I'm in the market to buy a new camera. I've been looking at FS5 Mark IIs and FS7 Mark IIs for years and I've always wanted one and then boom, FX6 comes into the world and I'm like, this thing looks amazing. Hey Sony, can I borrow that camera for a week to play with it to see if this is the right fit for me? So this is my disclaimer. I asked Sony for these cameras so I could make this video for you and also so I can make an informed decision on the right camera for me. So in this video, we've been using the FX6 for one week on commercial projects, on YouTube videos, and this is my opinion on whether or not I think someone like me, who might be you, would be interested in this camera. If you guys are looking for like a deep dive on the technical aspects of these cameras, you guys can go check out Gerald Undone and Philip Bloom's reviews. Both are linked below. The opinion and the viewpoint that I'm coming from is someone who will be using this camera day in and day out, cares about the ergonomics and cares about how it works with my workflow as a working professional content creator. Let's get into it. The Sony FX6. Built-in electronic variable ND filter, XLR inputs, SDI output, S Cine Tone, professional dedicated cinema camera. The Sony A7S III, 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Takes photos, IBIS, more affordable, smaller form factor, less time to set up. Yo Chris, do you still need me? Yes, don't go anywhere. I need you to do that Storyblocks ad read that we were talking about earlier. Oh, okay. So what do I need to say? Um, here, let me just get this script. You're gonna say something like this while some stock footage from Storyblocks plays. With Storyblocks, you'll have access to over a million different assets such as high quality footage, After Effects templates, music, illustrations, and sound effects. All right, I got this. <clears throat> Storyblocks, you'll have access to over a million different assets such as high uh, quality- Yo, 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 yo. Uh, dude, at, <laughs> way too much. Just more chill, just more relaxed. Like, try, try something like this. With an unlimited all access plan, you'll have access to every asset in their library for commercial and personal use. Okay, um, well, how, how about this? <clears throat> so, you should probably get the unlimited uh, all access plan. Uh, so you can just download hey, everything in their li uh, library. Dude. What? That was like the complete opposite. There's too chill. So let's try something like this. Storyblocks exists to help bring all your stories to life without sacrificing your vision due to time, budget, or resources. Every creator should have a Storyblocks membership. And then you'll say something personal like we've used it in this video and this video here. You still there? Oh, yes, sorry. I was just checking out that link in your description. This is really affordable. Honestly, every creator should have this. Well, that's the goal of why we're doing this right now. We want people to go to storyblocks.com backslash Chris Howe and check out all the flexible subscription plans. That's why I'm hiring you. Well, just say that then. But I'm not supposed... I'm not the one supposed to say. You're, I'm, hi I'm hiring you to say because you're the voiceover guy. The Sony FX6. Okay, the Sony FX6. No, you're done. I'm done with you. I'm talking to them now. You're I've talking, got, okay. Not, no, I'm muting you, on mute. So like I mentioned, I've been using this camera for the last week and here are a few of the things that I've noticed. The skin tones on the FX6 look slightly better and more natural. Now I do wanna point out that this is when I put up the Sony a7S III image and the FX6 image and then look at the skin tones and go 5% better. If I just saw the Sony a7S III footage, I'd probably go, that looks great and move on. Like you guys saw in many of the other FX6 reviews, the autofocus between the Sony a7S III and the FX6 is near identical. Here's my friend Alan Planner walking along the focal plane and you can see that it's just locked on both and when he pops down and pops back up, boom, locks right on. All right, so let's talk about the size of this camera. It is a great size when it's just the body. Once you start adding lenses and grips and the top handle and audio and everything else, it gets pretty big, especially when you're comparing it to the size 
of a Sony a7S III. Now there's good and bad when it comes to a larger sized camera. Number one, let's talk about the good. The optics of a camera this size is great when you have it on set, especially for client work. Now this sounds vain, but it's actually so important when it comes to the business of videography. What does this look like to your clients? What is the client experience? Can they actually visualize the money they spent? With this camera, yes. When you hold the Sony a7S III, you might need to build this up a little bit more with a cage for it to look more intense. Is that important? That's up to you to decide. Now let's talk about the negative of a big size camera. The optics comes in play again. When you're out shooting and you're just doing a run and gun gorilla type shot, almost always with a bigger camera, security's gonna come out and go, where's your permit? Why are you guys shooting here? Is this a movie? Literally, Lucas and I were shooting a camera test and a guy came out and goes, hey, are you guys shooting a movie? Where's Ryan Reynolds? <laughs> But again, on the flip side, I would also love for a client to go, wow, this looks super professional. I'm so glad we hired you. So there's two sides to that. Let's actually talk about the ergonomics and the workflow for a second after using it for a week. So little asterisk here, this is where this opinion is coming from. I come from the world of using a mirrorless and a DSLR camera for the last seven years. I am used to shooting like this. I know the menu button is here. I know the playback button is here and I know how to quickly change everything. So I am used to this. This is home. This is what I'm comfortable with. This is second nature. Now jumping into the Sony FX6, I felt like I was always like kind of holding it awkwardly and I was like, I like that I can press all the buttons quickly, but I don't know where all the buttons are. So I guess if you use this camera and this was your only camera, you'd probably be quick with it. But for me, everything just felt slower. It felt like it got in the way. It was less intuitive right out of the gate as a mirrorless owner. So one of the things you have to keep in mind if you do get the FX6 and something that I found is there is a learning curve to getting used to working with the camera. Now, don't get me wrong. I've been talking about the FX6 and the things that I like and I don't like, but let's talk about some of the home runs in terms of the Sony FX6. Number one, the electronic variable ND. This thing is so amazing. Like shooting with this to get cinematic footage is just a blessing. You don't have to actually rely on having like a variable ND on the front. And the nice thing is that it's so smooth that when you have ND auto on and you go from like a dark setting to a light setting, it actually smoothly transitions without having to change the depth of field or your f-stop or shutter speed. That's arguably one of the best selling features of this camera. And also because it's an electronic variable ND, I can put a polarizer on the front of my lens and now I can get rid of because if you stack just a normal ND and a polarizer, you get all these weird vignetting effects and everything else. The footage is just garbage. But now we can actually use PLs. Woo! Now let's talk about another great thing about the Sony FX6. It comes with built-in XLRs. So in terms of audio, you have the top handle, two XLRs, and you have a front channel. And if you want, you can throw the XLR K3M on top. That's this little guy right here. And then you can add two more. XLRs to it. So you can have four XLRs and two channels of stereo audio. That means six channels of audio. But what's the compromise? Number one, you don't have a universal mic jack. So if you wanted to use this right here and just plug in a 3.5 millimeter microphone, because that's the only one you have kicking around in your bag, well, you're out of luck. You can't use it. You have to find professional solutions. And number two, the moment you take the top handle off, you've lost all your channels of audio. All you have left is a little scratch track that literally just sounds like garbage and it's just there for you to sync up audio and post. So again, this is where you have to come from when you think about this camera. You're using it as a professional in professional settings. Whereas on the Sony a7S III, the audio out of the camera isn't that bad. If you needed to use it in a pinch, you could vlog with it, quickly get the audio bit and move on. But what are my options? I can plug in this microphone and then use that jack right there. So those are the things that you need to keep in mind when it comes to audio. The thing is though, the Sony FX6 is an amazing dock camera when you're using labs and shotgun microphones, and that's what it's designed for. All right, so let's talk about IBIS for a second. The Sony FX6 does not have IBIS. This camera, the Sony a7S III, does have IBIS. This is where the actual sensor is stabilized. So if you are considering the Sony FX6, there's two things that you have to keep in mind when it comes to stabilization. Number one, you'll have to use a lens that has optical steady shot, like this 24 to 105 right here. Or another option is to use Sony software called Catalyst, which takes all the metadata and gyro data that's in the sensor when it shot everything, then stabilizes it in post. Now, when you do shoot that way, make sure you leave a little extra room Room so that it can kind of like crop and auto crop on your shot. Then you actually get a very, a surprisingly epically steady shot. Both Lucas and I, when we look back on this stuff, we're like, this software is insane. 
But then again, this camera has IBIS and you can turn steady shot off and then use the Catalyst Browse software on this too. So there's a lot of options when it comes to being stabilized. We did a couple slow motion tests. Here are the two cameras in 120 frames per second and 240 frames per second. As you can see, they look exactly the same, but if they do look different, there's something that I've missed, let me know in the comments below, but I've been looking. I looked at every single pixel, all 8,294,400 pixels. Like with any camera, I think it's important to see how it handles in low light. Now the Sony FX6 is dual base ISO, so if you're shooting in bright conditions, your cleanest image is gonna be at 800 ISO, and when you're shooting at night, it really cleans up at 12,800 ISO. The last note that we're gonna talk about is the S Cinetone color profile. Now one thing I did wanna note is that Sony has made leaps and bounds over the last couple years in terms of skin tone, and I think they've done a really, really good job with the S Cinetone. Now, to compare it against the Sony A7S, the most comparable option is to go no picture profile. So here's S Cine Tone, and here it's no picture profile. The S Cine Tone looks really good. I think it's a beautiful image. The skin tones look really nice, really natural, very cinematic. But one of the things that I do wanna mention in terms of my workflow and how I use this camera is I prefer to shoot S-Log. I like having the flexibility. I like being able to create things the way that I want to. But if you're the type of person that just wants a professional camera, has to go quickly to broadcast, well, S Cine Tone could be for you. So that's just my opinion. Again, here are those two images, S Cine Tone and no picture profile. Okay, final thoughts on the Sony FX6. Again, this is my personal opinion. Take this as you see fit. Number one, I love this camera. Please do not get me wrong with my title. I think this is an amazing camera. All my videographer friends and cinematographer friends are super jazzed on it. They're like, this is amazing, let me play with it. But then again, I'm a hybrid shooter. I'm someone who is a professional photographer and a professional videographer and an online personality. So when it comes to that, I'm just confused because I need a camera that can hit a lot of marks and this is very good at video, but this is also very good at video and smaller and shoots photos and has IBIS. So this is where I get confused because I go, I'm familiar with this, I like this camera, but I just don't know where this camera fits. And the thing that confuses me the most is I still want a Sony FX6 after all of this. I want this camera to just be in my studio, set up, ready to go all the time because it has XLRs, variable ND, it looks professional, it has good battery life. All these things are super important to me, but then again, it's just hard to justify the extra cost on it. The Sony a7S III right now sells for $3,500. The Sony FX6 is $6,000. But if you want this to get close to this camera, you need to buy the XLR component on top. This is about what, $700 or something like that? If you want a few stops of ND, well you have to buy a variable ND. So this is a two to five and you would want a six to nine. So for about $1,000 to $1,100, I can get all the extra little benefits of this camera into this camera for less money. As Philip Bloom said, it's a confusing little camera. I love it, I don't love it. I'm just somewhere on the fence with it. But in terms of like, hey Chris Howe, what are you gonna buy? You got insurance money to spend on this thing. What are you gonna buy? I feel like you can probably make a conclusion at this point. I think the first and most obvious purchase is the Sony A7S III. I'm gonna buy another one of these cameras with a few lenses. I love this setup. This is an amazing camera. If you haven't considered this camera already for your videography and photo needs, put this on your list, it's amazing. Now, if you're looking to level up, you're a professional videographer, you want more features, you need SDI out. Sony FX6 is an amazing choice and that's who they designed it for because Sony is so good at having a wide range of products that fits every single person's needs, including a Canadian YouTuber that has a channel where he talks about cameras and shoots photos and is on Instagram and maybe does TikTok one day. There's a camera for him and I'm sure there's a camera for you. All right guys, thank you so much for watching. That is the end of my FX6 review. Door, sorry guys. Hey guys, Chris just stepped out and guess what? I'm doing the ASMR outro. That's right. Voiceover guys doing the outro. If you haven't by now, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell. It's not really a bell, it's more of a button. Just click the button. All right. You guys know what time it is. It's the ASMR outro time.